3058A, the prosecutor versus Vujanin Popović, Ljubiša Bejara, Drago Nikolić, Radivoj Miletić and Dinko Pandjurić. Good morning, Your Honours. Barbara Goy appearing on behalf of the prosecution, together with Lada Sholian, uh, Matthew Gillette, Kyle Wood, Todd Schneider, and our case manager is Janet Stewart. Good morning, Your Honours. <coughs> oh. uh, good morning, Your Honours. Uh, good morning to everyone in and around the courtroom. Uh, on behalf of Mr. Vojadin Popovic, Zoran Živanovic, and Mira Tabušković. Thank you. And for Mr. Biaro? Good morning, Mr. President, Your Honors. Jana Stojic and Norm Sepanek on behalf of Ljubiša Beata. Thank you very much. And for Mr. Nikolic? Good morning, Your Honors. Uh, for Mr. Drago Nikolic, Stefan Burgon, Marlene Jaha, and myself, Ms. Elena Nikolic. Thank mm -hmm. you. Good morning. Mr. Miletic. Good morning, Your Honours. From Radivo Miletic, Natasha Favo Ivanovic, and Nenad Petrušić. Yes, and for Mr. Pandurovic. Um, good morning, Your Honour. Peter Haynes and Simon Davis for Vinke Pandurovic, supported today by Helena Tosic and Kinga Tabori. Thank you. May I just ascertain from the five appellants whether they can follow the proceedings in a language they understand? Mr. Popovich, are you hearing me? That is. Yes, I can hear you. And Mr. Biaro? Da. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. I can hear you, Mr. President. Yes, I can hear you. You were rich. Yes, I can hear you, Your Honor. Today, the appeals chamber convenes in accordance with the scheduling order issued on the 17th of November, 2014, pursuant to Rule 117D of the Tribunal's Rules of Procedure and Evidence to deliver its judgment in the case of Prosecutor versus Popovich, Biara, Nikolic, Militic, and Pandurovic. Uh, let me inform the parties that Judge Foster Pokar is unable to sit during this hearing and therefore the hearing takes place pursuant to Rule 15 bis A of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence. Following the practice of the tribunal, I am not going to read out the text of the judgment except for the disposition. Instead, I will summarize the essential issues on appeal and the central findings of the appeals chamber. I emphasize that this oral summary does not constitute any part of the official and authoritative judgment of the appeals chamber. This will be distributed in writing to the parties at the close of this hearing. In view of the length of this summary, a break or two may be taken during this reading. I begin first by giving the background of the case. The events giving rise to this case took place in July 1995 in and around Srebrenica and Zepo in the Podrinje region Eastern Bosnia and Herzegovina. The trial chamber found that these events followed an intense military assault by the Bosnian Serb forces, or BSF, on the United Nations protected areas 
of Srebrenica and Zepo in July 1995. Bosnian Muslims fled Srebrenica to the nearby town of Potokari, where the women, children, and the elderly were loaded onto packed buses and transported away from their homes in eastern Bosnia. Thousands of males were detained in horrific conditions and subsequently summarily executed. In Sipa, a series of military attacks also led to the removal of the entire Bosnian Muslim population, either by transport or by flight. The trial chamber found that a joint criminal enterprise existed to murder the able-bodied Bosnian Muslim men from Srebrenica in July 1995, or the JCE to murder, and that a joint criminal enterprise existed to forcibly remove the Bosnian Muslim population from Srebrenica and Zepa in 1995, or JCE to forcibly remove. Now, during the relevant period, Mr. Popovich was the chief of security of the Army of the Republika Srpska, or the VRS, Drina Corps. Mr. Biara was the chief of the VRS Main Staff's Administration for Security. Mr. Nikolic was the chief of security in the 1st Light Infantry Zvornik Brigade of the Drina Corps. Mr. Militic was the chief of the main staff's administration for operations and the training. And Mr. Pandurovic was the commander of the Zvornik Brigade. The trial chamber determined that Messrs. Popovic, Biera, and Nikolic were participants in the JCE to murder, and Mr. Militic was a participant in the JCE forcibly remove. The trial chamber convicted Mr. Popovich and Mr. Biera of committing, through the JCE, to murder, genocide, murder as a violation of the laws or customs of war, as well as extermination and persecution as crimes against humanity. Mr. Popovich and Mr. Biera were both sentenced to life imprisonment. With respect to Mr. Nikolic, the trial chamber convicted him of committing, through the JCE to murder, extermination and persecution as crimes against humanity and murder as a violation of the laws or customs of war. He was also convicted of aiding and abetting genocide. Mr. Nikolic was sentenced to 35 years of imprisonment. The trial chamber convicted Mr. Milic of committing through the JCE to forcibly remove murder, persecution, and forcible transfer as crimes against humanity. He was sentenced to 19 years of imprisonment. With respect to Mr. Pandurovic, the trial chamber convicted him of aiding and abetting murder as a violation of the law or customs of war, as well as murder, persecution, and forcible transfer as crimes against humanity. He was also convicted of murder as a crime against humanity and as a violation of the law or customs of war pursuant to command responsibility. He was sentenced to 13 years imprisonment. I come now to the appeals. Following the rendering of the trial judgment on the 10th of June, 2010, the prosecution, Mrs. Popovich, Biero, Nikolic, Miletic, and Pandurovic appealed the trial judgment. The appeals chamber heard 
oral submissions of the parties from the 2nd to the 6th of December 2013. I now outline the contentions of the parties, the appellants, and the prosecution. And I deal first with alleged errors concerning the indictment. Messrs. Popovich and Miletic advanced arguments contending that the trial chamber erred in law by convicting them either on the basis of crimes not charged in the indictment or on the basis of allegations not clearly pleaded in the indictment. The appeals chamber finds that Messrs. Popovich and Militich have failed to demonstrate that the trial chamber erred. The trial chamber found Mr. Pandurovich guilty of having aided and abetted the murder of the 10 wounded Bosnian Muslim prisoners from the Milici hospital or Milici prisoners by omission through a failure to discharge a legal duty. He argues that as the prosecution neither pleaded nor gave any indication throughout the trial that he was charged with aiding and abetting by omission through a failure to discharge a legal duty, the trial chamber erred in convicting him of this crime. The appeals chamber recalls that the indictment must be read as a whole and finds, Judge Nyang dissenting, that it contains allegations that provided notice to Mr. Pandurovich of the material facts underlying the charge that he aided and abetted the murder of the Milici prisoners by omission. The appeals chamber, Judge Nyang dissenting, therefore dismisses the relevant part of Mr. Pandurovich's appeal. I turn now to alleged errors relating to the admissibility and weight of the evidence. Mrs. Popovich, Biero, Nikolic, and Militic present several challenges to the admission of evidence by the trial chamber, as well as its assessment or weighing of evidence. Specifically, they challenge the trial chamber's decisions not to admit certain evidence, admission of statements made pursuant to Rule 92 quarter of the rules, use of untested and uncorroborated evidence, and admission of intercepts and other documentary evidence. The appeals chamber finds no error in the trial chamber's exercise of its broad discretion. It dismisses all challenges considered in this section of the appeals judgment. I turn now to alleged errors concerning witness credibility. Messrs. Popovich, Biara, Nikolic, and Militic present challenges concerning the overall credibility of witnesses who testified in this case. In particular, they challenge the trial chamber's assessment of the credibility of witnesses PW168, Mamir Nikolic PW101, and Shreko Asimovic, having considered the party's submissions, the appeals chamber finds that the appellants have not shown that the trial chamber erred and dismisses all challenges regarding the overall credibility of witnesses. I turn now to alleged errors in relation to the evidence regarding the number of deceased. Mr. Popovich contends that the trial chamber erred in its findings on the number of persons executed at specific execution sites. Messrs. Popovich, Biara, and Nikolic all challenge the trial chamber's findings on the total number of persons executed based on forensic and demographic evidence. <coughs> 
this chamber dismisses all challenges to the total number of deceased. I now deal with other evidentiary matters. On the issue of alibi, Mr. Popovich submits that the trial chamber erred in its consideration of his alibis for the evening of 14 July 1995 and 23rd July 1995. Specifically, he argues that the trial chamber failed to consider all the evidence on the record in rejecting his alibi that he was at the forward command post in Krivace on 14 July 1995 and therefore could not have participated in the killings at Orahovac. Likewise, he argues that the trial chamber erred in dismissing his alibi for the 23rd July 1995 by disregarding evidence that he was in a meeting at the time of the killings in Bissina. This chamber finds that Mr. Popovich has not shown that the trial chamber disregarded evidence concerning his alibis or demonstrated that any error by the trial chamber resulted in a miscarriage of justice. It therefore dismisses his arguments. Mr. Biara also contests the trial chamber's consideration of his alibi for the 13th and 14th July 1995 and its finding that he was actively engaged in murder operations in Bratunach and Zwanik. He argues that the trial chamber erroneously assessed and disregarded the defense evidence and inappropriately shifted the burden of proof to the defense by requiring it to prove his alibi beyond reasonable doubt. After considering Mr. Biara's arguments, the appeals chamber dismisses all of his challenges. <laughs> Messrs. Nikolic and Biara also present challenges to the trial chamber's assessment of expert evidence. Mr. Nikolic argues that the trial chamber disregarded the evidence of a military expert, while Mr. Biara disputes the trial chamber's approach to identification evidence. Further, Mr. Militich contests the trial chamber's reliance on intercept evidence and contends that it arrived at erroneous conclusions. Having considered the party's submissions, the appeals chamber finds that the appellants have not shown that the trial chamber erred and dismisses all challenges regarding expert evidence, identification evidence, and intercept evidence. I now address the appellants and the prosecution's challenges to the trial chamber's findings on the crimes perpetrated against the Bosnian Muslims of Eastern Bosnia. First, genocide. The trial chamber concluded that members of the BSF committed genocide against the Muslims of Eastern Bosnia, which constituted a substantial component of Bosnian Muslims as a group. The trial chamber was satisfied beyond reasonable doubt that Messrs. Popovich and Biara committed genocide through their participation in the JCE to murder with genocidal intent. The trial chamber found that Mr. Nikolic did not have genocidal intent, but it concluded that he aided and abetted genocide. Mr. Biara argues that the trial chamber erred in finding that the targeted group of Bosnian Muslims was a substantial part of the entire group. He contends in particular that the trial chamber ignored the numeric size of the targeted group. 
wrongly assessed the strategic importance of the Srebrenica enclave and widened the scope of the targeted group as defined by the indictment. This chamber dismisses all of Mr. Biara's challenges and finds that he fails to show an error on the part of the trial chamber. Mr. Nikolic argues that the trial chamber erred in failing to identify state policy as an essential element of genocide. The appeals chamber finds that the question of whether the existence of state policy is required for genocide has already been considered by the tribunal. And as a policy is not a legal requirement, then it follows that state policy is not a legal requirement of genocide. The appeals chamber also finds that Mr. Nikolic has not established the existence of cogent reasons to depart from this jurisprudence, or that the trial chamber erred. Messrs. Popovich, Biara, and Nikolic also challenge, to varying degrees, the trial chamber's findings of the genocidal intent of the BSL. Notably, Mr. Nikolic argues that the acts of killing and infliction of serious bodily and mental harm against the Muslims of Eastern Bosnia were not perpetrated with genocidal intent by submitting that the trial chamber failed to consider that no genocidal acts were perpetrated against the Bosnian Muslims of Sepa, that the column of 10,000 Bosnian Muslims was allowed to pass through the defense lines of the Zvornik Brigade, and that numerous prisoner exchanges occurred in mid to late July 1995. Mr. Nikolic also argues that the trial chamber ignored significant recent precedents, establishing that the killing of a group of men while forcibly transferring the remainder of the population does not evince genocidal intent. This chamber considers that the trial chamber found that the Muslims of Eastern Bosnia including the inhabitants of Zippo, were found to be victims of the genocidal enterprise, and it can see no error in the trial chamber's consideration of the opening of the corridor to allow the column to pass through or the exchange of prisoners. The appeals chamber also considers that there was no obligation on the trial chamber to explicitly consider the authorities relied upon by Mr. Nikolic and that he fails to show an error. In sum, the appeals chamber dismisses the appellant's arguments concerning the genocidal intent of the BSF. I now address the challenges to the appellant's liability for genocide. Mr. Popovich disputes the trial chamber's finding that he possessed genocidal intent and, among other things, argues that it disregarded evidence as well as analyzed his use of a derogatory term out of context. Mr. Biara argues that the trial chamber erred in finding that he had genocidal intent as it reached its conclusion on his knowledge of the murder operation solely on the basis of his position in the VRS, erroneously drew inferences from certain exhibits and evidence, and failed to take into account the legitimate military aims of attacks on the Srebrenica enclave. Mr. Biara also argues that the trial chamber erred in convicting him for genocide 
after acquitting him of forcible transfer as genocidal intent in the present case can only be inferred from the combined intent to murder the Bosnian Muslim men and forcibly transfer the women, children, and the elderly. Having considered the arguments made by Mrs. Popovich and Biera, as well as the prosecution, this chamber finds that the appellants have not shown an error by the trial chamber. It dismisses their arguments. The prosecution presents various challenges to the trial chamber's finding that Mr. Nikolic lacked genocidal intent. It argues that the trial chamber failed to apply nine accepted factors for inferring genocidal intent relied on irrelevant factual and legal considerations and erred, in fact, as no reasonable trial chamber could have concluded that Mr. Nikolic lacked genocidal intent. This chamber finds that although the trial chamber did not enter contradictory findings regarding Mr. Nikolic's involvement, in the movement of prisoners from Brachunak to Zwanik, and whether he was directly implicated in the killings at the Branieva military farm, these contradictory findings do not occasion a miscarriage of justice in light of the trial chamber's overall reasoning. <coughs> Further, the appeals chamber considers that the trial chamber erred in considering as a factor negating genocidal intent the fact that the Milici prisoners remained alive when in Mr. Nikolic's custody because of the lack of evidence or findings on his role in the matter. This error, however, does not occasion a miscarriage of justice considering the wide range of evidence the trial chamber relied on to conclude on Mr. Nikolic's men's rear. The appeals chamber is not convinced by the remainder of the prosecution's arguments, and Judge Nyang dissenting dismisses its challenges regarding Mr. Nikolic's men's rear for genocide. I turn now to the party's submissions regarding conspiracy to commit genocide. The trial chamber found Mrs. Popovich and Biara criminally responsible for conspiracy to commit genocide, but declined to enter convictions against them. <laughs> Concluding that the full criminality of the accused is accounted for by a conviction for genocide. The prosecution submits the trial chamber erred in law as conspiracy to commit genocide and genocide are distinct crimes. The appeals chamber, Judge Nyang dissenting, finds that it was necessary to enter convictions against Mrs. Popovich and Biara for conspiracy to commit genocide in order to reflect their full culpability. By failing to do so, the trial chamber erred in law. Furthermore, the appeals chamber discerns no error in the trial chamber's underlying factual findings and dismisses Mrs. Popovich's and Biara's arguments to the contrary. The appeals chamber, Judge Nyang dissenting, therefore grants the prosecution's ground of appeal, six, and Judge Pokar dissenting enters convictions against Mrs. Popovich and Biara for conspiracy to commit genocide. Next, 
crimes against humanity. And I deal first with the party's submissions. The trial chamber found beyond reasonable doubt that there was a widespread and systematic attack directed against the Bosnian Muslim civilian population of Srebrenica and Zepo, commencing with the issuance of Directive 7. The chamber found that the attack included the following components. The strangulation of the enclaves through restrictions on humanitarian supplies. The gradual weakening and disabling of the United Nations protect, Protection Force, or UNPROFOR, and a military assault on the enclaves, culminating in the removal of thousands of people from Srebrenica and Zepo. In addition, the trial chamber found that the military assault on its own constituted a widespread and systematic attack against the civilian population. Messrs. Biara, Nikolic, and Militic were found responsible for certain crimes against humanity and present challenges to the related findings of the trial chamber. Mr. Biara's main contentions are that the trial chamber erred in finding that one, the actions taken against the military-aged Bosnian Muslim men in Potashari and the column of Bosnian Muslim men fleeing towards Tuzla formed part of a widespread and systematic attack against a civilian population. Two, he satisfied the knowledge requirement for commission of a crime against humanity. Three, he possessed the mens rea for extermination. And four, he had the specific discriminatory intent required for the crime of persecution. After considering the submissions made, the appeals chamber finds that Mr. Biara has failed to demonstrate that the trial chamber erred and dismisses his contentions in their entirety. Mr. Nikolic challenges the trial chamber's factual finding that his acts were clearly tied to the widespread and systematic attack on Srebrenica and that he knew that this was the case. He also argues that the trial chamber erred in concluding that he had the requisite mens rea for persecution. Having considered the party's arguments, the appeals chamber finds that Mr. Nikolic has failed to demonstrate that the trial chamber erred and therefore dismisses his arguments. May I now turn to the challenges presented by Mr. Militic. This chamber finds that he has failed to demonstrate that the trial chamber erred in linking Directive 7 to the attacks on the Srebrenica and Zepa enclaves. In finding that all VRS military activity around the enclaves constituted an attack on the civilian population without distinguishing legitimate military actions, and in finding that a plan to restrict humanitarian aid and the resupply of UNPROFOR constituted part of the attack on the civilian population and that his acts were part of this plan. The appeals chamber also finds no merit in Mr. Militich's argument that the trial chamber erred in finding that he knew of the widespread and systematic attack against the civilian population and that he knew that his actions comprised part of the attack. Regarding Mr. Militich's challenges to the trial chamber's findings on persecution, 
This chamber first dismisses his submissions that the trial chamber erred in concluding that he had discriminatory intent, that the JCE to forcibly remove was partly implemented by acts of cruel and inhumane treatment, and that he intended those acts. Mr. Militich also alleged errors in relation to the underlying act of terrorizing civilians. He submits that the trial chamber failed to establish that he had the specific intent required for persecution through terrorizing civilians, as it had to establish the intent to commit the underlying act and the intent to discriminate. The appeals chamber first notes that a trial chamber does not need to establish the elements of the underlying acts, including the mens rea. All that is required is establishing that the underlying act was deliberately carried out with discriminatory intent. Mr. Militic has failed to show that the trial chamber erred in establishing his discriminatory intent for persecution through terrorizing civilians, that he played a role in disseminating terror, and that he intended to do so. Mr. Militic made further submissions, disputing the trial chamber's consideration of shelling and sniping directed at the civilian populations of Srebrenica in the months preceding the fall of the enclave as part of the actus reus of terrorizing civilians. This chamber considers inter alia that the trial chamber established with sufficient specificity the numerous incidents of shelling and sniping of the civilian population of Srebrenica in the months preceding the attack on the enclave, and that these incidents of shelling and sniping were of sufficient gravity to constitute an underlying act of persecution. This chamber therefore dismisses Mr. Militich's challenges to the trial chamber's findings on the underlying act of terrorizing civilians. Mr. Militich also disputes the trial chamber's findings on forcible transfer as a crime against humanity. The appeals chamber finds that Mr. Militich has failed to demonstrate that the trial chamber erred in finding that the actions directed against the civilian component of the column constituted a crime against humanity. The trial chamber found that able-bodied Bosnian Muslim men fled Zeppo and crossed the Drina River into Serbia. The trial chamber concluded that this movement across the Drina River amounted to forcible transfer and had the required nexus with a widespread and systematic attack on the civilian population. The appeals chamber notes that the trial chamber made no finding that the men who crossed the Drina River included any civilians and considered that, in light of the facts of the case, no reasonable trial of fact could have reached as the only reasonable inference the conclusion that the nexus requirement for crimes against humanity had been established. This chamber therefore finds that the trial chamber erred in this regard. It grants Mr. Militich's appeal in a relevant part. His convictions for persecution and forcible transfer as crimes against humanity in relation to the men who crossed the Drina River are therefore reversed. And the impact of this reversal, if any, will be addressed below. I turn now to Mr. Biara's challenges regarding murder as a violation 
of the laws or customs of war. I will now address these challenges. War crimes. Mr. Biara submits that the trial chamber erred in finding him guilty of murder of Bosnian Muslim men from Podatari and members of the column of men heading for Tuzla. Notably, he argues that the trial chamber erred by listing persons as victims who were in fact taking an active part in hostilities at the time they were killed. Trial chamber was satisfied that since the Bosnian Muslim men from the column or who had been separated from their families at Potachari had been killed after their surrender or capture and during the period of their detention, they were not taking an active part in hostilities at the time the crimes were committed. <coughs> the appeals chamber finds that Mr. Biara has not shown <coughs> that the trial chamber erred and dismisses his arguments. The appeals chamber also dismisses Mr. Biara's arguments that he did not know that the victims were not taking an active part in hostilities when the murders were committed and that he did not possess the required mens rea. I now address the individual criminal responsibility of the appellants. And I deal first with joint criminal enterprise to murder. The trial chamber found that the plan to murder Bosnian Muslim men already existed on the 12th of July 1995, and that the separation of the Bosnian Muslim men that started later that day marked the commencement of the implementation of the plan to murder. The trial chamber also found that the plan to murder subsequently expanded to include the males captured from the column on the 13th July. 1995. Mrs. Popovich, Biara, and Nikolic presented various challenges to these and related findings on the existence and implementation of the plan to murder. This chamber dismisses all of the appellant's arguments concerning this aspect of the trial judgment. In particular, it rejects the submissions of Mrs. Popovich and Biara concerning the trial chamber's reliance on witness Momir Nikolic's evidence, alleged errors by the trial chamber concerning the separation process, and the trial chamber's consideration of the detention conditions in Potachari as further evidence of a plan to murder. Messrs. Popovich, Biara, and Nikolic all dispute the trial chamber's findings regarding the extent and the expansion of the plan to murder. Having examined the submissions of the parties, this chamber finds that the appellants have failed to show that no reasonable trial of fact could have concluded as the trial chamber did and dismisses their arguments accordingly. The trial chamber found that the BSF killed several thousand Bosnian Muslim men in locations across the Bratunak and Zwanik areas. It also concluded that it did not have evidence in respect of each killing site to determine whether the physical perpetrators <coughs> 
of these killings were themselves members of the JCE, but considered whether each killing formed part of the common purpose, even when the crimes were committed by persons outside the JCE or by unknown members of the JCE. Mr. Biara challenges the findings regarding the scope of the JCE to murder. This chamber dismisses Mr. Biara's contentions that the killings at the Kravitsa Warehouse and the Serska Valley were not committed in furtherance of the JC to murder. Regarding the killings at the Jadar River, the appeals chamber finds that the trial chamber erred in fact by finding that the Bratunax Brigade was involved in these killings and thus the link between the killings and the JC to murder is no longer readily apparent from the reasoning of the trial chamber. <coughs> However, this error does not result in a miscarriage of justice, as the appeals chamber is satisfied that in light of the close cooperation of the VRS and MOOP forces in the lead up to the killings at the Jadar River and in the implementation of the common purpose of the murder plan, a reasonable trial of fact could have found a link to at least one member of the JCE. Mr. Biara also argues that the killings of six men at Turnover were not a part of the common purpose of the JC to murder as the Scorpions unit who perpetrated the crime was not a member of the JCE or linked to a member. Mr. Popovich presents a similar challenge. The appeals chamber first observes that the trial chamber did not address the question of whether the members of the Scorpions unit were members of the JCE and its findings do not allow for such a conclusion. Further, after considering the findings of the trial chamber and the arguments presented, the appeals chamber Judge Nyang dissenting is not satisfied that a reasonable trial of fact could have established a link between the Scorpions unit and a member of the JC to murder, thereby holding the JC members responsible for the turnover killings. The appeals chamber, Judge Nyang dissenting, therefore grants Mrs. Biara's and Popovich's appeal in this regard and reverses their convictions for genocide, extermination and persecution as crimes against humanity, and murder as a violation of the laws or customs of war to the extent they concern the turnover killings. For the same reasons, the appeals chamber Judge Nyang dissenting also proprio motu reverses Mr. Nicolich's convictions for genocide, extermination, and persecution as crimes against humanity and murder as a violation of the laws or customs of war to the extent they concern the turnover killings. I will address the impact of these reversals, if any, below. I turn now to the appellant's contentions pertaining to mens rea. The trial chamber found that Messrs. Popovich, Biara, and Nikolic shared the intent to carry out the common purpose of the JCE to murder. This chamber dismisses the submissions of Messrs. Popovich and Nikolic inter alia concerning the trial chamber's assessment of and reliance on evidence from PW 168 and Momir Nikolic. The appeals chamber also finds no merit in Mr. Nikolic's contentions that the trial chamber erred in finding 
that he knew of the common purpose of the JCE to murder and shared the intent to carry out this purpose. After considering Mr. Biara's submissions concerning the alleged errors by the trial chamber in finding that he was aware of and implicated in the murder operation by the morning of 12 July 1995, as well as in finding that he knew of the common purpose of the JCE and shared the intent to carry out this common purpose, the appeals chamber finds that Mr. Biara has failed to show that the trial chamber erred in this regard. The trial chamber also found that Mrs. Popovich, Biara, and Nikolic each made a significant contribution to the JCE to murder. Regarding Mr. Popovich, the trial chamber concluded that he figured prominently in various aspects of the implementation of the plan to murder. Mr. Popovich contends, among other things, that the trial chamber erred in finding that he had a coordinating role in the murder operation. Specifically, he also challenges the trial chamber's findings that he was the lieutenant colonel who directed the executions that took place at Orahovach on the 14th July, 1995, and coordinated logistics for the killings that took place at the Branieva military farm and the Pelicha military and the Pelicha cultural center on the 16th July, 1995. After considering the arguments presented, the appeals chamber, Judge Robinson dissenting in part, finds that Mr. Popovich has failed to show an error by the trial chamber. He also challenges the trial chamber's findings on his presence and conduct in Rochevich on 15 July, 1995. In particular, its reliance on the testimony of witness Shreko Asimovich. The appeals chamber finds that Mr. Popovich has failed to show any trial chamber's error in this respect that would result in a miscarriage of justice or would invalidate the trial judgment. Mr. Popovich also presents challenges to the trial chamber's findings concerning his role in the murder of the Medici prisoners. Although the trial chamber erred in counting Retso Mustafic, who was killed on 15 July 1995 as one of the Medici prisoners, the appeals chamber considers that this has no impact on Mr. Popovich's conviction or sentence. Likewise, the trial chamber erred in considering that Mr. Popovich killed or facilitated the killing of the Milici prisoners, as this phrase suggests an alternative conduct. However, as the trial chamber did not in fact rely on the alternative conclusion that Mr. Popovich killed the Milici prisoners, the error does not invalidate its judgment. In sum, Mr. Popovich has failed to demonstrate an error by the trial chamber in relation to his contributions to the JC to murder that, was, that would impact his convictions or sentence. Mr. Biara also disputes the trial chamber's findings underlying its conclusion that he made significant contributions to the common purpose of the JCE to murder. <clears throat> Specifically, he contends that the trial chamber erred in finding 
that he had a key role in orchestrating the murder operation, including his presence in Prizefovac and Bratunac on 11th July 1995, Podachari on 12th July 1995, Orahovac on 14 July 1995, as well as his conduct in Bratunac on 13 July 1995. Mr. Biara further contests the trial chamber's reliance on evidence it considered in finding that he was implicated in identifying locations, securing personnel and equipment, and so overseeing the execution of the murder plan at individual killing sites. He also challenges the finding that he interacted and met with other participants in the murder operation, as well as that he was omnipresent in the Zwanik area. Having examined the arguments presented, the appeals chamber finds that Mr. Biara has failed to demonstrate that the trial chamber erred in making its findings and dismisses all of his contentions regarding his contribution to the JC to murder. The trial chamber found that Mr. Nikolic was involved behind the scenes of and at various detention and execution sites in the Zwanik area. His culpable acts included securing personnel to guard and execute prisoners, as well as giving directions at one of the killing sites. Mr. Nikolic challenges several specific findings of the trial chamber with regard to his contribution to the JCE to murder. In particular, he contends that the trial chamber erred in finding that he sought to persuade soldiers to participate in the killings at Ohravaj by concluding that he ordered that prisoners at the Kula school be secured and relying on witness Asimovich's evidence to establish his involvement in the crimes committed at Koslo. However, Mr. Nikolic has failed to show an error that would result in a miscarriage of justice and the appeals chamber dismisses his grounds of appeal as far as they concern his contributions to the JCE to murder. The prosecution also appealed some of the trial chamber's findings as they relate to Mr. Pandurovich and his membership in the JCE to murder. The trial chamber concluded that Mr. Pandurovich was not a participant in the JCE to murder, as he lacked the intent to carry out the common purpose of the JCE to murder and did not significantly contribute to it. The appeals chamber first dismisses the prosecution's contention that the trial chamber failed to provide a reasoned opinion. Regarding Mr. Pandurovich's intent, the appeals chamber finds that the trial chamber erred in finding that Mr. Pandurovich did not know that his subordinates were committing or aiding and abetting crimes in the murder operation until 16 July 1995. Nevertheless, the appeals chamber finds that although he knew about his subordinates' assistance in the murder operation as of noon on 15 July 1995 and failed to intervene, and secondly, knew about Mr. Popovich's planned arrival on 23 July 1995 to Zwanik and its probable consequences for the Milici prisoners held in the Zwanik Brigade's custody and did nothing to prevent Mr. Popovich from sealing 
their faith. This knowledge does not in itself compel the conclusion that he shared the intent of the JCE to murder. The appeals chamber notes particularly in this respect the key role played by the VRS main staff and the security branch regarding the assistance rendered to the murder operation by his subordinates on 15 and 16 July 1995. And the difficult military situation the Zwanik Brigade faced when Mr. Pandurovich resumed active operational command on 15 July 1995, requiring his immediate attention. Further, regardless of Mr. Pandurovich's motivation for opening the corridor for the column, which was in contradiction to orders of his superiors, or for transferring 140 to 150 prisoners to the Batkovich detention, detention center, his actions did save thousands of Bosnian Muslim lives in the Zwanik area. The appeals chamber therefore finds that the prosecution has failed to demonstrate that the trial chamber erred in finding that Mr. Pandurovich was not a participant in the JCE to murder. The trial chamber found that Mr. Biaro was liable pursuant to the third category of joint criminal enterprise for the opportunistic killings that occurred in Bratunats, Potachari, the Petkovice School, and at the Kravice supermarket. Mr. Biara contests the trial chamber's underlying findings, and in particular, the linking of the perpetrators of the opportunistic killings to a member of the JCE to murder. The appeals chamber observes that when entering the initial findings on the opportunistic killings, the trial chamber did not always specify whether the principal perpetrators were VRS or MUP forces. Frequently, they were attributed to the BSF. This chamber considers that the unreferenced subsequent finding that these killings were committed by the VRS is erroneous. This chamber recalls that although the trial chamber found that the BSF consisted of two components, the VRS and the MUP forces, the trial chamber's findings could be construed as allowing the principal perpetrators of these crimes to come exclusively from the MUP. The appeals chamber considers that it was incumbent upon the trial chamber to clearly set out how it established the link between the JC members, who were all VRS members and the principal perpetrators. The appeals chamber considers that the trial chamber's failure to further elaborate on this link constitutes a failure to give a reasoned opinion. The appeals chamber finds that based on the trial chamber's findings, the only reasonable conclusion is that the BSF members who were involved in the opportunistic killings of these Bosnian Muslim men were working in close cooperation with the VRS units whose ultimate superior was Ratko Miladic and in some instances were working with either Mr. Biara or Mr. Popovich. The appeals chamber further finds that the only reasonable inference from the trial chamber's findings is that Mr. Miladic was also a member 
of the JCE to murder. And this chamber is satisfied that a reasonable trial of fact could have found a link between the perpetrators of these opportunistic killings and Messrs. Miladic, Biera, or Popovich, who were all members of the JCE to murder. The appeals chamber thus considers that the trial chamber's failure to provide a reasoned opinion, establishing these links, did not invalidate the trial judgment. Mr. Biara also presents several challenges to the trial chamber's findings in relation to the mens rea requirements for JCE3 and asserts that the trial chamber erred in finding that it was foreseeable to him that the opportunistic killings would occur and that he willingly took that risk. He also argues that the trial chamber erroneously found that it was foreseeable to him that the opportunistic killings would be carried out with persecutory intent. And by finding that a specific intent crime can be committed through JCE 3. After considering the arguments presented, the appeals chamber dismisses Mr. Biara's arguments in their entirety. And here I see I've written in my judgment B-R-E-A-K and I will therefore take a break so that I do not become broken myself. <coughs> we are adjourned for half an hour. Oh, nice. Very good, very good.